Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Extreme weather events have been accelerating rapidly around the world in terms of frequency. So they're happening more, more often. One in a thousand year events that happen multiple times in the space of a decade is, is a good example. They're, they're happening, the severity is increasing of these events. So we're getting torrential rain events leading to flooding or the water that normally would have been transported elsewhere is not going there. So we're getting droughts in, in other places. The duration of these events is longer. For example, the torrential rain event because the guiding jet streams are moving slower. So the storms are not being transported as quickly over over certain areas over cities for example and there's also a lot more water vapor in the atmosphere in fact about seven percent more than than the pre-industrial situation um it, for every degree temperature rise there's seven percent more water vapor in the atmosphere that water vapor rises up condenses into uh, droplets forming clouds releasing energy which fuels these storms we're getting storms occurring where they didn't occur before, so the distribution is changing. Um, so we've got the frequency, the severity, the duration, and the distribution of these extreme weather events is changing. So I'll explain here why. I mean, the basis, the root, the root cause of these changes is the cha changing jet streams. So I'll talk about the jet streams and what they've been doing lately. So here we have the uh, northern hemisphere. We have the polar jet circling the, circumventing the earth, the subtropical jet, and then the same thing in the southern hemisphere. If you have a cross section, this is the equator. This is the North Pole. This is the extent of the, of the lower atmosphere. The troposphere extends up to the red lines here. Um, the stratosphere is above, the division is called the tropopause. So near the equator, it's very hot. The hot air rises up a long way. It's about 17 kilometers up to the jet stream. Over in the, in, at the North Pole, it's very cold. It's only about seven kilometers up to the peak here. And you get these circuits so of the air rises up, comes down here, cools and descends in the Hadley cell. The ferrule cell goes this way. It's like a meshing of gears and the polar cell is this way, and then you have the polar jet here and the subtropical jet here. This is another view of the polar jet and the subtropical jet. A paper just came out recently talking about the increase of clouds on the planet. So because we've got an overall warming, the, 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 these are moving upwards slightly, so we're getting clouds at higher elevations, because there's water, more water vapor in the atmosphere, we're getting more cloud. Because the Arctic is warming much faster than the equator, this whole thing is tilting upwards, if you like. So we're getting more cloud going to higher latitudes. So, so it's, it makes perfect sense, um, based on our knowledge of the climate system, that the clouds are behaving this way. The Think of the jet streams as separating cold air from warm air. This is another view here, the subtropical jet, the polar jet. This is the idealized view. What we're seeing is a fracturing of the jet stream. In reality, it doesn't look like too much like this, and I'll show, I'll demonstrate how. Uh, this is another view of the jet stream. So it circumvents the earth, very high speeds in a central core, speed dropping as you go away from the center of the core. Uh, this is a good schematic here. So one to three miles thick, if you like, 1,000 to 3,000 miles long, circumventing the Earth. This is uh, an example of a case where there's a large temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator. So you get mostly zonal flow which would be the red line. So there is some north-south deviation, but it's mostly west to east. This is meridional flow. As we heat the Arctic, 
the, the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator drops, so the jet stream becomes uh, wavier. So it goes becomes warmer retinal, it slows down, the troughs here reach closer and closer to the equator and cross the equator more. I'm, I'm, I, I've been trying to show in my last few videos, although I need to get older data to show that, but we know the Arctic is warming very fast. We know that the temperature gradient on the planet is changing, so therefore the jet streams have to change in this fashion. But of course this needs to be, to, to, there needs to be a lot more work done on this area. Um, this just shows some more data on the jet streams here. And, uh, you know, we have cold air coming down here, hot air up here. These are the ridges, these are the troughs of the jet stream. Okay, I hope that helps. So let's look at some data. Okay, so this is, um, in, the, in a couple previous videos, I looked at uh, the jet stream crossing the equator. A lot of meteorologists said, you know, not much is changing, but they really need to look at the climate system and how the Arctic is warming and then see that that temperature gradient is changing and therefore the jet streams have to change. So I'm just going to show a lot of cases here of what the jet stream is actually doing. So, so the dates here, December 21st, 2015, and you can see the jet is basically splitting here. Okay, part of it is going north of the equator, part's going south, and then it's combining. So what you see is, is the southern hemisphere jet, subtropical jet, if you like, although how do you know which one is which? I mean, anyway, this branch here splits over South America and then joins into the northern hemisphere. Another case is here. Okay, uh, December 9th, 2014. So what happens is, of course, as the northern hemisphere winter uh, comes, the jet stream in the northern hemisphere, they all move north. And then as the summer comes, they all move southward. So, and the, uh, the, the, of course, but in the winter, the winters are warming in the Arctic more than, the, more than any other season. So that's causing the waviness. So this is the, this is the Northern Hemisphere winter case. Now, the Southern Hemisphere jet stream does similar things, but its movement in the, it, with the latitude is less because there's more, a lot more ocean down here. So the temperatures don't change as much. They're, they're lagging with the seasons, whereas here there's a lot more. You have a lot more atmosphere, a lot more ocean land contrast, and that affects the positioning of the jet stream, the, the crests and the waves more as the jet streams are slowing down. So what you can see here is you can see a lot of movement here. You can see uh, so so southern hemisphere troughs would be going this way you know, crossing the equator, joining with northern hemisphere troughs. So it's very from messy situation here. Um, if I go back here, this is uh, December 14th, 2013. And you can see here, um, you can see a motion here coming down. And if I advance, uh, if I advance uh, days, Okay, you can see what's happening. This whole thing, Northern Hemisphere jet, is looping and joining the Southern Hemisphere here. Parts of it are coming back up north. It's splitting again here over South America. I can advance a few more days. And you can see this continuing for, you know, about a week or so, a week to 10 days, if you keep advancing. Let's have a look at some more another time period. So this is uh, February 10th, 2015. You can go on er Google Earth Null School um, to change the projection. O is the sphere. That's the default. Go to E and that gives this type of projection. Look at 250 millibar for the jet streams and have a look at this data yourself. You can see a strong flow here across the equator um, there's components from the northern hemisphere jet stream here and here, and there's components from the southern jet stream coming up and combining here. So there's a lot of mixing across the equator 
of, um, from the jet streams in this particular case. Okay, this is another case. This is uh, February 2014, February 1st, and you can see the waviness here, very strong flow here, lots of mixing across the jet stream, across the uh, equator. Okay, this is a very bizarre situation. So this is uh, February 5th, 2014, and look, what look what's happening up here. Look at this particular loop here. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So if I go back a day, okay, so this is what we see here. We see a, a, a strong ridge, and uh, it's, uh, this is the, uh, let me get my bearings here. This is the bearing straight, yes, good bearings. Okay, so you see the strong ridge coming here. You see this strong ridge coming here? So let's advance three hours at a time and see how that develops. Okay, so that's three hours forward. So this is being pinched off over here, getting wider on this side. Advance another three hours. Okay, we're starting to see this side weaken here. Go three more hours, it's starting to break off here and come and come towards the uh, entry point. And now we get a more of a separation here. I'm just advancing three hours at a time. Another three hours. Okay, and here we see it's joining. You know, we're getting this complete loop forming here. Okay, so we're getting a complete loop forming where the jet is being fed here and it's looping back onto itself. So let me uh, go a bit further here. And it's starting to get pinched down here now. Uh, more pinched, more pinched, and it's com separating completely. And uh, then it... Uh, what happens, is, I believe, is it starts to expand and move up into the Arctic. And there's other bands that are broken off, I guess, from, from uh, you know, the, the dynamics of it. It's starting to, it's starting to uh, become less focused and, and separate a bit more. But it's a very interesting uh, situation. Now... What other, what meteorologists have been talking about is, well, this is just, uh, you know, this is monsoonal flow. Um, this is an example of what we have really by monsoonal flow. So from Africa, flow almost parallel to the jets, to the uh, equator, and also in the Indian Ocean here. This is what we have by the monsoonal flow. Uh, this is another example. So this is in uh, June. 2015 in this case and this is so this is another view we get this monsoonal flow here um, I'm talking about this type of flow from from for the, of the jet streams not not this type of flow you know this is one of the first cases I showed in the video this is the type of thing I'm talking about and I have another view here of the earth so this is in the uh, spherical view uh, 250 millibar. So this is the case I showed you in uh, uh, February of 2014, February 5th in this case. So you can actually see, so this is the bearing straight right here. Move around. Okay, so we have Siberia, Alaska, the bearing straight, and this is that behavior which I cycled through showing how this thing formed and how it dissipated. So there's a lot of very, so in summary, what can we say about the jets? There's a lot of strange behavior going on. Um, we need to go back um, further back in time to and relate this behavior of the jet stream to the sea ice and snow cover loss because the Arctic is warming rapidly. So the jets are changing uh, correspondingly. Thank you.